Hello, this is Joe Pearson, the project planner for this application. This is a request to the planning commission to approve two special use permits. The first for a new coffee shop and the second for a new fast food restaurant and a minor special use permit for a new sign program filed by Holly King Winnegar, the project applicant on behalf of the property owner. The first proposed special use permit, or 21-503, is to permit the demolition of the existing approximately 7,000 square foot building and construct a new 1,800 square foot coffee shop and outdoor patio with a drive-through with a 15 vehicle capacity, along with associated parking lot for 25 vehicles and associated landscaping and infrastructure improvements on a 0.85 acre parcel. The second proposed special use permit, or 21504, is to permit the demolition of the existing approximately 18,000 square foot commercial building and construct a new 3,885 square foot restaurant and outdoor patio with a drive through with a 23 vehicle capacity and associated parking lot for 73 vehicles, along with associated landscaping and infrastructure improvements on a 1.47 acre parcel. Along with the two requested special use permits previously mentioned, the applicant is requesting an administrative parking relief to allow for a decrease in the number of required parking spaces required for the overall center, which includes the properties located at 1700, 1720, and 1740 Ventura Boulevard from 207 parking spaces to 182 parking spaces. And lastly, the applicant is requesting a new sign program for the center which will provide standards for buildings and drive-through signage for the new proposed buildings. The sign plan will also incorporate the existing freestanding freeway oriented sign on site. However, no changes are proposed to the existing sign structure. The project consists of three parcels located in the north part of Oxnard and the parcels are currently developed with two vacant commercial buildings and a red lobster restaurant and associated infrastructure improvements. These images generally show the regional commercial nature of the project area being located directly off the freeway and consisting generally of uses that serve the local region. As shown in the previous images in this aerial, the project site is bordered by shopping centers to the north and the east, a utility building and car dealerships to the west, and the freeway to the south. The project is located within the commercial regional land use designation and the Rose Santa Clara corridor specific plan zone. Both the land use designation and zoning district allow for restaurants, including drive through facilities with the approval of a special use permit. On August 2nd, 1990, the Planning Commission conditionally approved a special use permit to allow for three retail buildings to be located at 1700, 1720, and 1740 Ventura Boulevard. This approval was upheld by the City Council on September 11th, 1990, and while various businesses have operated on the site over the intervening years, the overall building configuration has remained the same. The center includes three parcels with shared access points. Currently, the center has two driveway access points. However, a third access point would be provided subject to the approval and development of the Starbucks project. The two access points currently provided would provide sufficient access to the site and would allow for adequate circulation around the site. The third access point 
would not adversely impact the circulation of the site and would allow each of the properties to operate more independently. While there is shared access and parking across all three properties in the center, the two drive-thru facilities have been developed to be self-sufficient, meaning customers are able to access the parcels through the driveways adjacent to the drive-thru facility, access the drive-thru lane and parking at the rear of the parcels, then exit the drive-thru lane and parking area through the same driveway for each of the respective facilities. Also, while the projects are drive through facilities, special attention has been paid to pedestrian access and circulation. Both facilities have been specifically designed to front directly onto Ventura Boulevard, providing for direct pedestrian access to the facilities from the right of way without having to cross the parking lot or drive through lanes. In addition, due to the length of the sites, an identified pedestrian path has been provided from the rear parking area to the buildings for both locations to provide or to minimize pedestrian conflict with vehicles circulating the site. In addition to the improved on-site circulation, the project has been conditioned to provide a new pedestrian crosswalk across Ventura Boulevard at the first driveway. Currently, the closest pedestrian crossing is approximately a quarter mile northwest at the intersection of Ventura Boulevard and Auto Center. The crosswalk will provide a safe pedestrian path for access to the site from across the street without having to drive to the project site, consistent with numerous general plan policies. Due to the operational characteristics of existing Starbucks drive through facilities operating in the city of Oxnard and beyond, special attention was paid to traffic circulation both on-site and in the public right-of-way given the high demand associated with the proposed business. As a result, the drive through lane has been designed with the entrance at the back of the parking lot so that should the queue capacity be, ex be exceeded, the backup will occur on-site and is not anticipated to impact the adjacent road network. While the provided queue exceeds the city requirements and has been designed not to impact the road network. A draft traffic demand management plan has been developed by the applicant team and reviewed and accepted by city staff, which identifies both existing and future programs that can be implemented to minimize on-site impacts and prevent vehicles in the queue from spilling off-site. For the Starbucks location, in addition to the standard operational items. Some of the key components include visibility and exterior cameras to allow staff to monitor the drive through lane, a requirement that prior to the queue exceeding its design capacity, a Starbucks member be tasked with walking the drive through lane entry and directing additional arriving vehicles to queue in the overflow queuing area per the excess queuing plan. The proposed Starbucks conforms with the architectural requirements as it features a facade with smooth stucco and new earth tone colors, which are appropriate for the design. Other materials include a wood trellis and mission style roof elements, consistent with the Spanish colonial style as defined by the Rose Santa Clara Corridor specific plan. Along with this, the project has incorporated a more contemporary glass storefront system. Similar to the Starbucks, due to the operational characteristics of existing in and out drive through facilities operating in the city of Oxnard and beyond, again, special attention was paid to traffic circulation both on site and in the public right of way given the high demand associated with the proposed use. As a result, the drive through lane has again been designed with the entrance at the back of the parking lot so that should the queue capacity be exceeded, the backup will occur on site and is not anticipated to impact the adjacent road network. While the provided queue exceeds the city requirements, and has been designed not to impact the road network, a draft traffic demand management plan has been developed by the applicant team, 
and reviewed and accepted by city staff, which identifies both existing and future programs that can be implemented to minimize on-site impacts and prevent vehicles in the queue from spilling off-site. For this location, in addition to the standard operational items, some of the key components include, again, visibility and exterior cameras to allow staff to monitor the drive through lane, and that prior to capacity being reached, a in and out staff member will be tasked with taking mobile orders to minimize food wait times. And lastly, an excess queuing plan will be implemented to direct excess vehicles to the appropriate locations. As with the Starbucks, the proposed in and out also conforms to the architectural requirements of the Rose Santa Clara Corridor Specific Plan, as it features a facade with smooth white stucco and a mission style red tile roof elements. Along with this, the project has incorporated a more contemporary flat roof design with large glass windows, again, consistent with the architectural requirements of the Rose Santa Clara Corridor Specific Plan. As part of the specific plan, a sign program is required for all development projects within the specific plan area. The proposed sign program for the center has been provided in the staff report. The proposed sign program has been designed to comply with the sign guidelines and standards of the specific plan. All new sign a new sign program is being requested due to the proposed drive through fast food restaurant and coffee shop. The new sign program will incorporate the existing freestanding sign on site. However, again, no changes are being proposed to that sign structure. The primary difference will be the incorporation of standards for drive through signage, including mini board and drive through directional signage to provide standards for the future drive through facilities. The proposed sign program also outlines the types of signs and standards for all other building signs, freestanding signs, window graphics, and door graphics on site, again, which are consistent with the Rose Santa Clara Corridor specific plan standards. All future businesses would be subject to these requirements, including the proposed businesses. On sign permits requested for businesses that any of these three businesses would be reviewed by planning staff for compliance with this sign program. As discussed in further detail in the staff report, the project furthers many of the policies identified in the 2030 general plan by providing for the revitalization of an existing commercial site. And additionally, the project is a infill project, so it's able to take advantage of existing infrastructure, which has been determined to be adequate through the DAC process. And again, as previously mentioned, the project will also improve pedestrian connections and have a pedestrian orientation to the development. Also, as identified in the staff report, the project is consistent with the Rose Santa Clara Corridor specific plan zone standards, except as modified by the requested parking modification to allow for reduction of parking from 207 spaces to 182 spaces. Looking at the parking for the center, the proposed Starbucks site has a total of 25 parking spaces with a stacking credit of 11 spaces for a total of 36 parking spaces in compliance with this parking requirement of 36 spaces. The proposed in and out has a total of 73 parking spaces with a stacking credit of 20 spaces for a total of 93 parking spaces which exceeds the parking requirements for the in and out restaurant, which is 78 spaces. However, the center is subject to a shared parking agreement. So parking is shared among all three properties. 
And currently, the Red Lobster building does not have sufficient parking on its site to accommodate the required parking for the restaurant, as shown in the table. The Rose Santa Clara Corridor Specific Plan allows the decision maker to grant administrative relief from parking provisions of the Rose Santa Clara Corridor Specific Plan. Pursuant to the specific plan, the applicant has provided a parking study prepared by a professional traffic engineer registered by the state, demonstrating that the required parking is excessive and showing the amount of parking that should be required for the proposed use. The study used city parking rates, the Urban Land Institute hourly parking utilization profiles for the Red Lobster and proposed in and out as well as derived parking utilization profiles for the proposed Starbucks were applied to determine the forecast shared parking demand for the center. Based on the provided study, the weekday peak parking demand analysis for the center is forecast to occur at 6 p.m. with 139 of the 151 on-site parking spaces expected to be utilized. On the weekends, using the Saturday peak time, the parking demand analysis for the center is forecast to occur at 7 p.m. with 49 of the 151 on-site parking spaces expected to be utilized. Based on this, the parking supply of 151 parking spaces is able to accommodate the peak parking demand for the center during both weekdays and weekends. Therefore, staff is in support of the proposed parking modification. In accordance with section 15.332 for infill development and 15.311, for on-premise signs of the California Environmental Quality Act for CEQA guidelines, project characterizes infill development and on-site signage may be found exempt from the requirements of CEQA. The project includes the redevelopment of an existing commercial center to allow for two drive-through facilities and a new sign program for on-site signage. The overall proposed development site is located on a 3.67 acre site, which is surrounded by urban uses. The project site will be adequately served by all required utilities and public services. The project site has no value as habitat for endangered, rare, or threatened species, as it is a currently developed shopping center. The project will not result in any significant effects relating to traffic, noise, air quality, or water quality. The sign program would provide standards for the creation of on-site signage associated with the development on the three properties. Signage is generally limited to building signage, drive-through signage, and freestanding signage. Therefore, staff has determined that there is no substantial evidence that the project will have a significant effect on the environment. Both, both drive-through facilities will be subject to various conditions of approval. Some of the key conditions limit the life of the permit to 36 months, requires automatic value control for the drive-through speaker boxes, a requirement for the implementation of the previously discussed transportation demand management plan, and lastly, requires the installation of a pedestrian crosswalk. Based on the information provided in this, or, sorry, the project is not located within a general plan identified neighborhood. Therefore, a community workshop was not conducted for the proposed projects. 
Consistent with public noticing requirements, the Planning Commission hearing was advertised in the newspaper and an on-site posting and by mail to property owners within 300 feet of the subject property. And to date, no public comments have been submitted in support or against the proposed project. Based on the information provided in this presentation and associated staff re report, staff recommends that the Planning Commission find the project to be categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to SQL guidelines section 15332 for infill development and 15311A for on premises signs and adopt a resolution approving planning and zoning. Approving a planning and zoning permit for a special use permit for the proposed Starbucks or 15 or 21503, subject to the findings and conditions provided in the resolution, and adopt a, re a resolution approving planning and zoning permit 21504 for a special use permit for the In and Out project, subject to the findings and conditions again provided in the resolution. And lastly, adopt a resolution approving planning and zoning permit 21-520-03 for a special use permit minor for the new master sign program. Again, subject to the findings and conditions provided in the resolution.